Well, what a lovely day. Uh, just waiting for my mate Fat Dave to turn up. We're going to go and do some filming with this new 360 degree camera. Uh, oh, hang on with it. Excuse me. Hello? Where are you? Pardon? You've got a problem? What's the problem? You've got a flat tyre? Really? And you've called the AA? You haven't? Well, I think you should call the AA and get them out. You, you've got a spare that you're going to try and fit. That's not a good idea, Dave. You, you know what you're like with nuts and bolts. You're not good with nuts and bolts. I should call the AA. So h how long do you think you'll be? No idea. Well, I think I'll go on without you, shall I? You've had a shower. And you've got aftershave on. Really? <laughs> the poor old geezer winding his propeller around oh he's got it started first go that's a result now we're in the well we're in the driving seat really and uh, god help us but you'll be uh, pleased to know there's no passenger there so uh, yes checking all the controls oh here we go and uh, he's uh, fiddling with his uh, satellite navigation but um, if he can't find his way back to this airfield, then there's something wrong with his eyesight. So um, anyway, he's, uh, he's off now. Boy, you're going a bit too fast uh, in the taxiing department. Uh, I know it's a lovely day and you're probably quite keen to, uh, to take off. Hold on a minute, there's uh, somebody else um, just about to depart in front of you. No, no, just hang back a bit. Hang back, hang back. Yep, they're off now. There they go. Okay, right. Now it's safe to uh, safe to backtrack. Uh, backtrack means going backwards. Uh, so he's going to go backwards. Well, he won't be taxiing the aircraft backwards, but he will be uh, going to the left now to line up for the uh, and prepare for the takeoff which will be uh, quite an interesting uh, episode and he's just got trundling up to the end of the whoa flipping heck and uh, yep he's got it round he's lined up with the uh, runway and he should be yep he's ready to go okay pedal to the floor here we go Yep, he's managed to keep it straight down the runway and uh, he's about, oh he's lifted off, he's off, he's off now and uh, f he's flying, he's flying and uh, which way is he headed? Oh, we're going to do a sharp turn to the left, yep, and head out towards, uh, head out towards the cliff edge. Having taken off and uh, zipping along the cliff edge now, heading in a easterly direction, will be, uh, or our intrepid aviator will be coming up to the uh, to the amazing uh, Bolt Head, which is uh, he's just flying over just now and just off to the uh, hmm, his left. Uh, down there is Solcombe Harbour, and the plan is to fly along the coast past um, Pearl Point and then whiz on down towards Start Point. That's the uh, that's the kind of uh, the kind of plan. So it's quite a quite a pleasant day. And uh, our man is just approaching uh, just approaching Pearl Point. Um, which, in fact, is the uh, uh, the most southerly tip 
of uh, southern England, which pokes out into the uh, English Channel. And there it is down below, Broad Point Coast Guard uh, Lookout. Uh, starting to get a bit more cloudy here, but uh, still uh, good visibility. And uh, we'll speed along to uh, towards um, towards Start Point. That's the uh, first stop. Just uh, coming up to uh, start point, it was uh, built in 1836, which um, was quite an achievement back in the day. All the materials to uh, build the lighthouse had to be brought in by uh, ship uh, from uh, round in Solcombe. The access down to the lighthouse um, was uh, non-existent and in the early days the lighthouse keepers uh, had to come by boat to uh, to land uh, and to go up to the uh, lighthouse and originally the lighthouse keepers uh, uh, lived in the lighthouse tower itself but by uh, 1871 they had built some new houses to uh, accommodate the uh, lighthouse keepers uh, this particular lighthouse was designed by James Walker and uh, is 92 feet high. Now, of course, it's uh, run by Trinity House and it's uh, fully automated. We uh, come around the corner of the headland here of uh, Start Point. We're going to head off down Start, uh, what is Start Bay, uh, heading down the coast, uh, keeping the coast on our left hand side and um, the first uh, sort of village of interest that will come up will be the uh, village of Hall Sands. Point Lighthouse. This uh, this headland is uh, is over one mile long, so it's it's quite a trail quite a long walk to get down there and back from the car park that you see at the top but um, it's well worth the walk and a, a spectacular view uh, can be had when, uh, when, when you arrive down at the lighthouse. The village of Hall Sands was a thriving fishing village during the 1700s and 1800s um, and by 1891 the population uh, was 160. Uh, and the residents were living in 37 houses. So it was, it was a real buzzing sort of community. But sadly, in, uh, in the winter of 1917, in January, they, became, uh, they came across a, a, a tremendous storm. And um, in, in virtually one night, four houses were lost completely. Now bearing in mind, this village had a, had a pub, the London Inn, had a post office, had a greengrocer's, and a mission room, and it was a real thriving community, and, and that was all lost pretty much in one night, in one night of storms. Oh, so this is uh, Hall Sands, uh, the village that was, um, the houses that were built by the Mildmay Trust to house the uh, villagers that lost their houses in that uh, dreadful storm of 1917. We're just coming along the coast now to Bee Sands, another small uh, fishing community which um, has been thriving for many years. Um, it's even got its own uh, freshwater lake here which was uh, built by the um, 
Oldsworth up at uh, Widdicombe House and as we go on past um, you can just see down there the uh, slate quarry that uh, was there running for many years and now we're approaching the village of Torcross again another fishing village um, that grew up on the um, on the beach here uh, with a freshwater lake uh, behind it um, the most interesting part of the coast I feel and rather unspoiled on round the corner now and um, cut, cut across country and we're coming back across the uh, Garrow Rock Hotel uh, that used to be which is now the Garrow Rock um, well it's pretty much um, holiday apartments um, and we're going to make an approach back in towards uh, Bolt Head Airfield so we'll be approaching across the uh, Salkham Bar and uh, we're making an approach on the uh, westerly runway at Bolt Head now the cliffs as you approach the, uh, the runway are 450 feet above sea level so it's quite a, a, quite a, steep, uh, a, a steep approach and, and, and quite a, can be quite daunting. And as you can see here, um, directly down below is the uh, Bar Lodge which is on Salkham Bar and there's a, a sand bar that runs across under the water there. But we're now making an approach to uh, what is now the main runway at um, at Bolt Head, and as we come over the cliffs here, this is part of the uh, uh, that was part of the wartime runway, which uh, ran almost out to the cliff edge. So we got Salcombe off to the off to one side there, and uh, we're now going to come in over over Becks, just down there on the right. South Sands Beach is just down there and the main runway is, is just ahead of us. And bearing in mind the uh, wartime runway ran pretty much from here, almost the cliff edge, ran all the way up to East Saw Car Park. So it was round about uh, 1500 uh, yards in its day and uh, they had a northeast southwest runway which ran uh, across it in the other direction. I really, really hope you've enjoyed this flight. It is a most spectacular part of the country and uh, I hope you've enjoyed also the uh, the different angles from this uh, 360 degree camera which gives a very different perspective and uh, i wish you all the very best and look forward to seeing you on the next one cheers for now take care bye